All right, gang, here we are with another episode of The Legends of Your Saltwater Guide. I'm sitting here with my good buddy, Kenny Nielsen. You guys have all seen his interviews, and he told me that I got to get down here and meet Bud and Bogey. These guys can tell you stories about when my father was a little kid showing up on the San Clemente Pier with his little tin tackle box. <laughs> so we're going to just to sit down like we always do and tell some stories we don't know where this is going or where it's headed, but hang on because I bet it's going to be a bitchin' ride. So hang in there. Here we go. Kenny, tell me about your buddies here. You, these guys are your legends, and it means a lot to me for these guys to be your legends because you were mine. I met Bud and Bogey when I was probably 10 years old, maybe, maybe younger. I don't well, you never believe this, but Kenny yeah. used to wear my shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, sometimes I'd buy new shirts and I'd give them to Kenny. And yeah. he can wear them easily. Sometimes they were too big well, for him. He was about eight years old. Yeah. Eight eight years old. Old. I don't know. Wow. Eight, eight years old. <laughs> <laughs> my dad built some apartments. Kenny was never him. little, was he? <laughs> oh, he was little. He, he was smaller than I am. Wow. <laughs> my dad built some apartments behind our house. And they rented the apartments. And uh, okay. Bud and Bogey and Bill lived there. And they all worked on the boats. And across the street, Joe Patterson lived in a house. And, well, he lived in yeah, there, right? Yeah. And then oh, yeah. He, he, mm -hmm. he rented a different house later on. And uh, so I kind of got into fishing, whether I liked it or not. <laughs> I was a young kid, and that's what to do. They had a skiff that they kept on the side of our house. And we went fishing in that skiff. I even caught a marlin when I was 10 years old. Out of that skiff. Oh, that really? But I'll tell you that story. That's a good yeah, story. Yeah, tell us story. that story. Tell the story. Because he's told me before, but you know what? That doesn't mean anything. But if you tell me, then I'll believe you. Okay, we had a <laughs> we had a little radio in our truck that you could get the fishing boats. I don't know how that worked, but it did. And I was listening one day, and it was in the winter time, fall. We'd quit fishing off the piers, and uh, I heard the boat called the Five Bells. It was a big yacht that belonged to the Packard Bell Company. Okay. And they were coming down the line uh, from Newport. All, uh, they were about off Dana Point and coming on down. And they had, uh, uh, were fishing marlin. Well, we, the weather was beautiful. It was flat, calm weather. And we, so we said, got Kenny and Bowie in the boat. And we, we said, let's go marlin fishing. So we, we looked, went down and launched the boat off the pier. And went out and we caught some mackerel. And we put them in a gunny sack to keep them, keep them alive. And went gunny sack. And then we uh, started out. And here comes the five bells. And when <laughs> a marlin came up between us and the five bells. And we were all rigged up and ready to go. And we put that mackerel out. And by God, we hooked that marlin up. And Kenny landed it. Took it right away from the five bells. Yeah, yeah. just right on this <laughs> On your the... skiff. <laughs> Big old yacht, you just yeah, took it right yeah. away from them yeah. on yeah. your you, skiff. You took that, that uh, fish home, didn't you? Hung it on the... Yeah. Hung it on the telephone on the telephone pole. Yeah. In, uh, in your... Zelly. In the, on in the side of your Zelly. house? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. That was a big fish. Right? It was that was your first 137 marlin. pounds. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first marlin I ever caught. Yeah. How cool is that? And when you say... Here's something that my guys don't understand. When you say you were all all geared up now look at nowadays when we're all geared up we have a two-speed with braided line and a top shot of floral carbon and a big giant circle hook when you say you were all geared up what do you mean you were all well, geared up come a, on tell the guys a, we had a pen 68 yeah i remember that which was a wide spool reel and I can't remember the two to one ratio. Or two to one like gear that. ratio. But you, you never know this thing is two speed. No. Yeah. I remember your dad had one of those conversions that he put on yeah. his reel. Oh yeah. yeah. It was put on a squitter. I remember those, the conversions on the squitter, yeah. the, the little the, gearbox like that gear went on the it. side, yeah. right. But you know, <laughs> we never have fished with it. Well, we're, we're old fashioned fishermen. I guess we're lucky your dad. We don't have any $500 reels or $400 right. reels. We were still using 113 to fish uh, Thresher Shark. The six eyes. We did it all yeah. the time. Black yeah. ones, right? The yeah. black six eyes, or did you have? Four O's, They're four the reds. Oh, the red four O, right. 113. Yeah. And we had the spectra on there, and we caught all lots of threshers on those. Nice. And I'll let you know, we had some problems sometimes. We had to follow the fish. We'd almost get stripped. Okay. <laughs> we got them. Back in the day, you were catching threshers rod and reel when no one all else was, huh? We, we fished for the market. Okay. So you're fish commercial for, fishing. Yeah. Yes. So you guys fished all the time. When Kenny met you, you guys were already fishing. But something brought you, what brought you to 
fishing. Well, I'll tell you how it started. Please. I, I got. I, we used to fish San Clemente. Okay. And back in the late forties, we come down every Friday night. We go out on the pier. Fish Glenn, on, we fish, came from Glendale. Fish California. on the pier. Okay. And we had a great big floodlight. And we get up and we unscrew one of the light bulbs <laughs> in, in, on the pier, plug in the <laughs> plug in the floodlight, drop it down into the water near the water and fish. I don't know how we fish quite a while for live bait. And okay, with, little, fish, like with lucky your little Joe's. lucky Joe, four yeah. fly, yeah, yeah. four lucky, fly, lucky buds, not lucky. Yeah. And then, <laughs> then at night, we used to get down and sleep on the beach. Okay. And the city didn't do that. They didn't bother us at yeah, all. They didn't. And later they built cabanas, so then we sleep in the cabanas. Yeah, day. they had some nice little swing, the old swing type. Uh, Down in San Clemente. Yeah. yeah. Really? We couldn't do that today. No. You know, no. 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 Way, but we never even thought about anything. And then we take a vacation, and Nelson Cook was running the Mustang. He says, Why don't you guys come over? You can sleep in my garage, all three of you. Bill and myself. And, <laughs> and you're like, really? Yeah. Because that's the captain really? telling yeah. you, huh? You're yeah. doing whatever he yeah. says, right? So that was that was a really a good deal. And then he got to go out on the boat. Well, yeah, but yeah. we pay our way most of the time. Yeah. But they give us the pass occasionally. Okay. I don't know why we used to, we were just customers. We were right? customers. But he saw you had the passion. I yeah. guess that's that's what it is. What it is man. We, we used to take the third week in August off for vacation, Bogey and I and my brother, and. Uh, we uh, we would fish uh, barracuda and sell them. Here we go again, guys. Just like all the old timers tell yeah. you, think about this: those slimy barracuda that y'all hate. Now, who Here we go. Nelson Cook's uh, deckhand Charlie Brownell took us up to Delaney's Fish Market in uh, Laguna Beach, okay. where we'd sell the barracuda. Wow. We thought it was the great greatest thing ever to, to sell fish fish. and get money. Oh huh? yeah, that yeah. Was the that Absolutely. And they, I guess they put the passion in us for commercial fishing. Because you just got to fish and make money. <laughs> Made money. Yeah. But uh, what I did, uh, we wanted to keep the fish really good, so I took two gunny sacks and sewed them together. And we wet it up and tied it on the rail. And we catch these great big log barracudas, which probably today nobody would ever believe it, but they were that big around and stuck a, three inches out of a gunny sack. <laughs> probably yeah, that's six, right. seven, eight say. pounds. Yeah. And they kept it in that gunny sack and kept it wet, and they, you could use them for a fence post. <laughs> they they were that down. long, huh? Yeah, well, they were so stove pipes. So right. stove pipes. Right? right? That's yeah. what they called them now, in the day. Yeah. All, you get these little pencil things. And, right. Yeah. And, and no stuff. one wants them. No. Ever. What and happened? Were, were, now, did you guys ever eat the barracuda back in those days? Uh, occasionally barbecued. Okay. Barbecue. But there were so many fish in those days, David, you just can't imagine. Imagine, you've heard this from your dad, I'm sure. How many fish were out in, the, in that water? It right. was a glory day to fishing. After the war, you see there had been no fishing during the war. So you're talking about the 50s, the early 50s? Yes. yes. The early 50s. Yeah. Yes. So you guys got to stay in his garage, go out on the boat, and then what happened? Because you became deckhands. Yeah, well, I, right? I, I, went, in, I went in the Army. I, oh, okay. During the Korean War. So and did uh, my father. Yeah. Was, well, at least that's well, what he, he says. Coast Guard. Yeah. I was in the army. Okay. I got out of the army. But during and the Korean I, War. I came down for some reason. I went fishing by myself. And I got on, I'm not sure which boat it was, but Joe Patterson was the skipper. And I began to talk to him. He says, How'd you like to go to work for me? Jeez, <laughs> that's the best thing I ever heard. You know? <laughs> You're working on the boat? Yeah. yeah. So that's how I got started. And for some reason, I got Bud and Bill, Bill. down fishing too. And we all went to work for Johnny Norick, who okay. built the the real fun. And, and a lot of fun. A lot of fun. The Marco the, Boy. The Sure Fun. The Sure Fun. Here's a boat we never heard of before. Well, not, that uh, boat belonged to Doug Perrin. Okay. I don't know if you did. Uh-uh. Uh, no. no. Before, before my time. Laguna Beach. Yes, okay. He lived in Laguna. Yeah. And the boat ran off the Capitol Pier? No, it ran off to uh, San Clemente. Oh, okay. All right. And he built the Marco Boy. You know, are you familiar with that boat? Nope. Well, uh, I, I worked uh, for Woody Payne. Uh, All right. And uh, he uh, built the Marco Boy, and uh, I went to work with him and helped him finish the boat. And then I, I came down to San Clemente, and my brother did too. So you worked for Woody Payne. Yes. Somebody, you guys watching this video, you guys will know this restaurant in Newport called Woody's. That's right. That it's Woody, Woody Payne's restaurant. That's right. Okay, Woody worked on the sport boats for, I'm just giving some guys a background yeah. for it. Actually, he was a bait hauler. He, beat, he was a bait hauler at San Clemente for a okay. while. Okay. And then... Then he built another boat called the Wharf Rat. 
All right. And that was a lobster boy. Well, yeah, because all I knew was Woody was the lobster guy. Yeah. That's yeah. who I knew him when I came well, around. He, uh, I, uh, after, when I started working with Woody, I worked the first season, and he fished lobsters in the winter. And uh, when we lived uh, in Fisherman's Alley with Kenny Nielsen and his family, I used to build lobster traps for Woody during the winter time. In the alley. In the alley. Stretch out the wire and, and yeah. build these lobster traps. I did that for about an hour one day with Kenny and Bobby, and I found out I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> in the alley. It was in the alley yeah, when I, I did it with 70, them. 75 at a time. Holy moly. That's gnarly. <laughs> Bending that wire? Yeah. That's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> but you were strong and young in those oh, days. Oh yeah, you <laughs> bet you. They didn't have the, the, the nice cutters they have now to cut them, the air cutters. Air dikes. You reason for a dikes. Air dikes. Holy yeah. moly. And I learned how to make the funnels. Okay. On chicken wire. Right. Uh, you pull them and you shape them so that they were fit to the, the uh, inside of the uh, lobster traps, about a four inch circle. Okay. And uh, now I'm waving it back up. Right. It was about a 10-inch circle, and it went down to about 4-inch circle inside the trap. Well, you know about that. And that's the law. It had to be the certain size. Certain size. That's right. the law. Uh -huh. But we got ahead of ourselves here on the lobster thing, because we're just becoming, remember, we're just both becoming deckhands here, you two. Yeah, that's right. So you guys are deckhands on the sport boats back in the, what year? That was, was in the 50s. Early 51, we two, about no, 50, four, five. 53, I think. Okay. That was our first year on the lot of fun. We All finished right. the boat in the winter of 53, and then we started running the boat. Now, listen, this is, I'm going to the here because these people need to understand on my website. Guys, this was the good old days of fishing, right? Yes. Okay. What were we fishing for? This is going to get you. Watch this. What were you guys fishing for back in those days? It had to be barracuda. Barracuda. Yeah, barracuda. Can you believe that? These guys were the good old days of fishing. When it was really good, we were fishing for barracuda. Can you believe that? Tell them how important it was. That's kind of bleeding in there. Yeah. Everybody wanted to catch a barracuda, right? That's right. And they took How weird. They took their barracuda home. Yes. They, they loved barracuda. And the calico bass. Right. Of course, we used to go down around the edge of the kelp and run chum line <laughs> and if we didn't get great lots of action in a chum line we'd go to the next kelp bed i mean that's how many fish were around so you just drove down the kelp line throwing bait until that's you found right. where they Maybe were that a day kelp circle, you know, right circle. chum circles yeah, yeah. but they on the edge that. of the kelp right. nobody does that anymore mm -hmm. i do still because i'm old school yeah. people get blown away i come in and throw bait on a spot and see if i get any reaction on the machine because we have sonars now and you guys didn't have any of that stuff back then, but we, we had could. Nothing. We didn't. You we just had, had to see if they were there by throwing bait, right? Yeah. The only way you knew if anybody was home was if you threw some bait. That's but right. it seemed like they were always home. I'm sure we had some, <laughs> we had some bummer days, you know that. That's right. The way fishing is, but we remember the good days and maybe not the bad days. Right. Just like these internet fishermen today, they only see when you post that you caught them. They don't see the other hundred days where That's you caught right. nothing. Just like you guys didn't report when you guys weren't catching shit, but you called your buddies when you were catching them and said they're biting. Mm -hmm. But you were, this is what blows my mind, and I think it blows everybody. And Kenny, your daughter's taking kids fishing today, and nobody appreciates the barracuda. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. What a fun fish to catch. Is there anything better than when they're biting the iron? When That's they're biting right. the iron, or feathers, or feathers, are yeah. the feather merchants feather like you guys, old yeah. school? Yeah. We used to use the little bonita feathers, and boy, they were they catch so many fish on those. And we used to bounce them. We didn't expect gaff. We just we learned, we bounce fish, wing fish. them over the side, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah, it was an art to bouncing a fish. You can't oh, bounce them, you, you can't keep them. You just can't <laughs> miss them. You right have to be able to spring them on board. You know, the you old got, got the fish coming to you. He's got momentum and speed. Keep that wheel peaceful. Right. And drop him right at your and feet. And drop him right That's at your right. feet. Don't hit your buddy in the That's face right. with it. That's right. And don't be ready if that around. jig comes flying out of its uh, mouth so it doesn't kill somebody next That's to you. That's right. But the thing that I find that's so unique is every single one of the legends on our website that we talk to, they all talk about Barracuda. That is, here we are. I didn't tell you guys to talk about Barracuda. This is just how it goes. This is where it goes. Every old timer, Kenny... Grew up fishing barracuda. You guys grew up fishing barracuda. I, we loved the springtime when the barracuda came when I was a kid. 
throwing the iron. We learned how to cast mm -hmm. because we wanted to throw the iron to catch barracuda. The feather merchant thing was gone. I learned that when I went up to San Pedro fishing on the Matt Walsh one day. I uh -huh. saw the guy fishing with a chrome sinker and then a piece of wire coming off the chrome with a little jap head. I don't mean to say it. I'm not trying to be politically incorrect. Uh, red, uh, red and white feather or a green and yellow feather or a blue and white coming off that chrome head with the red eyes on it. We yeah. call them jap heads. That's what we yeah. call them, right? Yeah. Right? That's right. And that well, was the lure. They were made in, they were made in Japan. Japan. Right. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not trying to be politically <laughs> incorrect. No, I'm just no. telling you what they well, were, guys. Our horse feathers were the same way. We called them jap heads. They're one ounce heads with little beady eyes. They're right. Glass eyes. eyes. You don't call them jap heads anymore. Oh, you no. Holy moly. <laughs> wow. That would be the end of the world if someone called it what it was. That would be it. Go ahead. Tell well, I'd us. like to give you uh, your very interested in Barracuda and tell you.